Now is when you'll learn the JSON file format, or as some other people pronounce it, JSON. Regardless of how you say it, JSON is currently a very popular format for transmitting data over the web. Working with JSON supplied by web services is a frequent task in app development. Additionally, JSON is also a viable solution for general purpose data saving in iOS. The term JSON is used somewhat confusingly both for the data format and colloquially as the data you'll store in that format. Example. I just downloaded some fabulous JSON. JSON is an acronym for JavaScript Object Notation. That follows from JavaScript itself being commonly referred to by the initialism JS. What JavaScript calls an object is the same concept as a heterogeneous Swift dictionary with strings for keys. Heterogeneous meaning that the values can be of more than one type. Another term for this kind of data structure is associative array, but neither Swift nor JavaScript use that nomenclature. In Swift, we use the same angle bracket syntax for arrays and dictionaries. JavaScript arrays also use angle brackets. But even though JS objects are more like dictionaries than Swift classes or structures, their syntax involves being wrapped up in curly braces. Aside from that, their syntax is just like Swift dictionary literals. JSON supports only a few data types natively. Your basic booleans, numbers, and strings are all available, and as long as they hold supported types, so are arrays. The same goes for dictionaries with string keys, as Jesse just went over. Data is not directly supported. Instead, you can store data bytes in strings. Date isn't supported either, but we'll get to that in a later video. In the start project, we've got two JSON files in the resources folder. Click on the one on top, image.json. This file represents a single JavaScript object. It's got a string for name and kind, and a gigantic string to represent the data. This is a base64 encoded string. Remember how with one hexadecimal digit, you can represent four bits? Well, with one of these, you can represent six, so it's more compact. The digits can be any uppercase or lowercase letter, a decimal digit, a plus sign, or a slash. In order to work with this data, we're going to need to translate from JavaScript to Swift. Jesse and I know exactly what this JSON represents, so bear with us while we do a little reconstruction. You'll understand it soon, too. Let's begin at the top with the name property. We'll need a type to hold that property. Image will do. And name will work fine as a string. Before we move on, let's import UIKit. We'll need that to deal with UI images. PNG data will transform from a string to a data. Kind actually represents an enumeration whose type we need to define first. It's got two cases, scene and sticker. The easiest way to translate from string to kind will be by using strings as kind's raw value. Now, declare image's last property, kind. Our type is all set up to hold the values from the JSON. Let's initialize it using a JSON file name. Now we need to get at the URL for the JSON file. You might guess that there's a URL method involved and you'd be right, but what's it a method of? Bundle. A bundle represents the resources for your app saved on your drive. When you're in a playground, the resources folder is your main bundle. Pass along file name and use JSON for the extension. This URL method will return nil if this file you're looking for can't be found. Let's define an error we can throw if that happens. The way you do that, if you haven't defined your own error before, is to declare an enumeration like decoding error. and tell Swift that it conforms to the error protocol. 
we'll need one case, missing file. Now add the throws keyword to the initializer. And throw the missing file error when you can't get a valid URL. Now you're going to see just how easy it is to decode JSON thanks to the power of Swift's JSON decoder. It's going to need some data to operate on, so create that from the file you're working with. And then we'll try to decode the data by using the JSON decoder's decode instance method. This first argument might seem a little strange if you haven't worked with metatypes before. To access a metatype, you just use .self after the name of a type. What that represents is a type itself, in this case, image, not an instance of a type. The other argument you need is the JSON data. Unfortunately, as the error tells you, image isn't actually decodable, yet. All it takes to fix that is to say that image and kind adopt the decodable protocol. Swift does all of the rest of the work for you. Now that an image can be decoded, finish up by assigning the decoded value to the instance you're initializing. Now it's time to try out your initializer. Decoding worked! Your JSON is now converted to an easier to work with Swift representation. And the reason it worked is that your three property names match in both languages, name, kind, and PNG data. It's very important that you spell them right. You can still decode JSON if your names in Swift don't match, but you'd need to put in more work and we won't be getting into that in this course. Now that you've got image data, you can initialize a UI image with it. Hey, Froggy! But we're not going to be working with a single image in a JSON file past this point. Instead, have a look at the other images.json file. You can tell from the square bracket on line 1 that this is an array of images. Let's comment out those last two lines we wrote. And let's create an extension of array. We need that extension using a WHERE clause to only apply to image arrays. Move the initializer into the extension because we'll be making whole arrays, not just single images. Take care of the first error by specifying that the error is an image decoding error. And instead of decoding an image, add brackets to decode an array of them. And add those same brackets when calling the initializer. Then add s's to say that you're working with multiple images. To see all the images, you can pluralize the UI image initialization too using map. If you right-click on the result and choose Value History, you can scroll through all of the images that were stored in JSON. Three scenes first, and then seven stickers.